All right, here's some help if you get stuck on any of the uh, 5.7 exercises. Uh, this is about static methods and static methods or static, well, static methods and classes and variables are ones that can be used across items in that class. Static methods don't have to have an object. You can just call it on the class like we're used to math.random. So a quick refresher. <clears throat> if you want um, a random number between like 1 and 10, you're going to first do math.random. They're static already because you didn't need an object. And times range plus 1 plus starting number. It's kind of weird. Um, most people remember we did a lot of these problems. If I want a number from 1 to 10, I multiply by 10. And that creates a decimal between 0 and 9.99, which if you turn it into an integer, makes a number between 0 and 9, because it truncates it. So you always got to do this plus 1. So it's a little trickier with the min to max. You still return an int. Um, this time, when you do math.random, <clears throat> and I was thinking of, like, what do you multiply by? <clears throat> well, if you want a number between 3 and 12, you subtract 3 from 12, and that's how far apart they are. So the spread here is the difference between your numbers. And then you want to add your shift value, and your shift value is the lower number, right? And then you... Um, and then you have to add one because it always truncates your decimals. So that's how I did it. I mean, I'm sure there's other ways. And then, you know, if you run your code, it'll produce um, random numbers between 1 and 10 for this first chunk, 10 of them. And then it'll p produce random numbers between 5 and 10 for the second chunk. Um, all right. Now, the second one is actually a pretty huge question. It asks you to write all the code for uh, rock, paper, scissors, and include things like if they hit enter to um, to kick you out. So um, basically, this thing is how you figure out a winner, right? You got your user and your computer uh, entry, and the first thing I do is is the tie because it's easiest. Okay, so you got you're gonna have a ton of if statements. If um, user dot equals, remember when you're using strings, you gotta use dot equals. So if the two strings are the same, then you have yourself a tie. Um, okay, so we're gonna print line, and we already have up here our uh, our answers, and it's gotta return a string. So we have these user these answers. So this would be a tie, and they're caps because they um, should stay there. You shouldn't be able to change these. So <clears throat> that's the easiest one. And then you're going to go through all the other um, possibilities. You're going to say if user dot equals. Um, what if they said rock, right? If user equals rock, and you're going to go through all the options. Let's say computer dot equals um, scissors, right? Did I spell that right? Um, so if user equals scissors and uh, computer, e or sorry, user equals rock, computer equals scissors, and system dot out dot print line. Um, we're going to say user wins, right? Because rock beats scissors. So, oops. So we're going to print out our user player, right? So then we got all those things. And you're just going to keep on going. I'm going to pause because this gets kind of boring. Um, you have to take into consideration all the different permutations. Okay, and I'll come back in a sec. At this point, I'd recommend to you know use a lot of copy paste. So I copied these two, where one of them, the user player one, and one the computer did. I just go back and 
So okay, what if we started with um, uh, paper, right? Or what if we started with scissors? Okay, and what would make the user win? Since this is the user winning one, uh, paper, right? And then we could do, okay, what if I said scissors, oops, not caps. And they said rock. So you can do this a lot quicker with some copy and paste. Okay, I just realized that this is supposed to return a string, so all my prints need to be turned into returns. Gosh darn it. Uh, shoot. All right, I'm gonna do that. Fix it. Oh darn it. That's better. Now we have rock, rock, scissor, scissor, paper, paper, and tie up top. And we used on equal all over the place. We returned a string every time because it's asking us to. This is a static function, so it can be you can use any static methods you want. Uh, we're going to be using randomizer here soon, but yeah, what we did here was we just wrote the method for figuring out the winner. Okay, and that was the first thing on here. Um, the other thing on here is your main. Okay, because we have the randomizer from our last one that returns a number between whatever we want. So, so now we're going to get going on this part. I'm kind of doing it out of order. But first we're going to ask the user to pick rock, paper, or scissors. Um, so we got to do our scanner thing, right? So we're going to go... Um, do we have a scanner up top? Yep, yeah, we imported it. Scanner... Um, <clears throat> input equals uh, new scan and then system uh, in. Let's double check that's right. We'll go over here. <clears throat> okay, scanner equals new scanner system dot in. Oh, need a semicolon. Okay, so we got our scanner built and then we're going to We're going to ask for, um, we're going to prompt the user for which one they want. So we're going to say system out print line, um, enter, oops, your choice. We'll go rock paper or scissors. Okay, and then looks like it went new line afterwards. Um, maybe we'll do that. Oh no, it's print line, so it'll work. Okay, so we got that. Then we need to get get the thing from the user and store it um, as their choice. Okay, so let's figure out how we want to do that. So we're going to make a variable and get it, get them to input. So this will be a string. And then you can name it, you know, whatever, user choice equals uh, input dot next line. And you can double check that one too in the, in the input stuff. Uh, if we want a string dot next line, that's what we got. Okay, so we're back over here. And we got the user to enter their next line. Now... You don't have to because you wrote like how they're supposed to write it, but you know, just good coding is sometimes to um, make sure that they can't enter all caps because sometimes I capitalize stuff. Um, so a really professional thing to do would be to set user choice equal to user choice oops, dot to lowercase. And that's just a cool thing to do. So we did the first part where we asked the user to pick something. So we'll put like user selection. Then we want the computer random selection. Okay, so for random selection, we want to use our randomizer thing here. Um, uh, so we'll pick a int. We'll make a something called rando number. Let's just call it rando. 
and we're going to get a random number between 1 and 3. We can do anything we want, but this is the next int, right? So we can go, um, whoops, where is it? So you go um, next int, and we'll go from 1 to 3. And then um, we need it to store it as something. So since I picked user choice up here, we're going to make a string called uh, comp choice. Okay, and then we're going to make a couple, some if statements. Some if um, rando equals equals one, they're going to pick um, comp choice is going to equal um, rock. Okay, and then you're going to do this again for some others. I'll pause it while I do this. So here they are, if, else, if, and else, right? We got a random implementation here of computer choice. Now, what's kind of crazy is here, it says after that, print out the winner. Okay, so we can do that. We can say, actually, we want to make it look like this stuff. So I'm going to get a little, um, I'm going to pause this and, and do a little writing here with some system out statements. I did a system out print with the user choice, a system out print with the computer choice just to match their thing. And how do I get this to show up? Well, we call our method we wrote earlier called get winner, since we now have a user and a computer thing. So we can do um, get winner on user choice, comma, comp choice. I want to make sure I got that in the right order up above. Um, yeah, user, then computer. Okay, and then we get to the one thing I've been kind of ignoring. Even though I read it ahead, I'm just showing you can do it after the fact. Um, you should keep playing the game until the user hits enter. Okay, so I want all this stuff, not the beginning thing, but all this with the user selection inside a while loop, right? So we're going to say, there's a couple ways. You can say while choice, user choice, um, is not equal to, so we do equals, um, and we'll put a not in front of it. So we can say while the user choice doesn't equal nothing, that's a good way to do it. But the problem with this is, you have to, um, first of all, I need this braces, all this stuff. Okay. Um, you have to give an original user choice. So I have to make it something other than blank. Uh, you could do this a different way too. You could do a break if they do press, if user choice ever equals um, a blank. So string. Do we already have user choice in here? They were. Oh, there it is. I'm going to erase this and announce it up here. So string user choice equals, um, we're going to start off just equaling A. It just has to be anything. Um, anything that's not, you know, blank. Okay, so I made a user choice, and this will keep happening as long as user choice is not nothing. Um, I put it all in the in the while loop. That's right here. And then, you know, it would be nice if I indented. I wish there was like a magic wand here to move stuff over. So I think that's working. And then if they are finished, you system out print, thanks for playing. Um, Now, if you wanted to get really nice, you could put in here uh, something to check if the user, instead of just turning it to lowercase, you could put something to check if they even entered in rock, paper, scissors, just by checking, like, um, put all of this in an if statement. If their choice, if user choice is rock, or if it dot equals paper or dot equals scissors. So that should get you going. That was a huge problem. Um, hopefully that helps. All right, with my last few seconds, the one thing I forgot was this right here is the whole point with a static 
thing. 